can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. I think that I went in another room. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I hope the presenters are here. Uh, welcome all to this uh, session on program. So we have five sessions, and uh, each of the presenters will uh, have five minutes to present their talk. And uh, after that, we will have a round of, we'll have a time around 30 minutes. And uh, I would encourage all of you to ask questions. And uh, just to help you all, as you go through the as you have any questions, I click on the or uh, at this admit, and uh, you, you post your questions, and uh, we can look at that later on for as well. So, uh, Let's get started. Uh, the first talk uh, is uh, supporting program comprehension by generating summary tree. And uh, Avijit Bhattacharji will be presenting it. So over to you, uh, Avijit. You have uh, five minutes. Thank you. Uh, so my uh, slide is visible, right? Yes, sir. OK. So uh, welcome, everyone, uh, uh, to our presentation uh, titled Supporting Program Comprehension by Generating Abstract Food Summary Tree. I am Obhijit Bhattacharji, and my co-authors are Dr. Bonani Roy and Dr. Kevin Snyder. So uh, in regular daily software development activity, developers had to read and write a lot of code. and the ratio of reading is more uh, 10 times than writing it. Also, they had to read and work on others' written code. And uh, many of the times, projects are not properly documented. So when someone new joins, they also struggle to find relevant parts. So our motivation is to uh, reduce program comprehension time so that uh, the software development cost will be decreased. So uh, we can help, uh, our motivation was to help in reducing the program comprehension time and also helping the developers, like if they have a task in hand, they can get some help uh, with our uh, tree uh, to get the relevant parts or know the relevant parts faster. Here uh, we have uh, a brief uh, like image how we did that. So uh, in our uh, longer video, we explained it. But in summary, we first extract the Python files. Then we construct the static call graph from the uh, code. And then we generate execution paths. And after that, we uh, use clustering algorithms some, and some other processings to make the abstract code summary tree usable uh, first. So uh, here is an uh, example, like uh, we have a simple calculator program to demonstrate the concept. So for example, in the root levels, we have some execution paths. So these are some possible scenarios where the program can go. And we group them according to their similarity. And we get abstract nodes. We call them abstract nodes. And uh, they are the abstraction of the program execution scenario. And uh, we, we find out like the titles of the abstract node is not sufficient uh, to understand the abstraction. So we came up with a node summary. It's a natural text summary of the abstract nodes and also execution patterns, like it's a sequential pattern from the execution path so that uh, developers don't need to go to all the similar execution paths. Instead, they can get some uh, uh, important patterns so that uh, they can get, uh, go to their task faster. So uh, in uh, uh, we developed a prototype and our 
uh, motivation was to see whether developers can get an overview of a software system and uh, and they can get, get some help when they had to do a task so we collected uh, a software uh, side uh, code source code from side data manager team and we invited uh, their developers to participate in the study and three of uh, them uh, participated in the study and we uh, asked them to evaluate our system on two use cases and they also answered open ended questions so uh, uh, the first uh, so uh, firstly they mentioned like they were able to relate uh, some high level features with the node names and uh, they also uh, like when they saw the node summary like in natural text they uh, liked and they uh, they are happy that they uh, instead of like only given some keywords they are able to read something in text and they are helpful also like uh, they can search the tree and uh, uh, do a guided exploration instead of like going through all the tree all the nodes so they also like that part and also uh, they can uh, when they have a specific task in hand they can search for the class name or method name so they like that part and uh, they also mentioned uh, this can be helpful to find co-change candidates like if they want to change a method like what are the places like uh, they had to take care of things like that and here is a uh, ui of the application we uh, we developed so in the left side developers can select their subject system uh, then uh, we present the ACS tree and they can search by a specific method. And in the right side, we present the node summary and execution patterns. Uh, so in summary, we'll uh, add some more support, GitHub support and uh, use some automatic code generation technique and also like uh, searching facility by file names and classes. Thank you. Thank you, Abhijit. Hi, can you see my slide now? We can see. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Xinghu from Zhejiang University. It's a great honor to share my recent work that aims to investigate practitioner expectations on automated code comment generation techniques. Uh, according to the best programming practices, writing meaningful uh, code comments is necessary to help uh, developers to get to read your code and understand it. Although important, there is always a gap between theory and practices. Therefore, the uh, first research question investigates the state of the uh, code commenting practices and the issues in the uh, development. Recently, different uh, approaches and tools have been proposed to generate code comment. However, there is no study to investigate whether they are important for developers. In this study, we conduct an interview and a survey to investigate are such tools useful for practitioners. Then we map uh, practitioners' expectations on code comments generation tools. Finally, we compare the current state of the art studies and practitioners' expectations. The gap between the between them motivates the community to propose more useful tools for developers. The overview of the of our methodology in the study is shown in this figure, and it mainly consists of three stages, including interview with professionals, online survey, and the literature review. Uh, these three stages aim to answer the proposed research questions. In the interview stage, we ask the open one open-ended questions about what they consider to be a good or a bad code comment and ask the interviewees to discuss the commenting practices and issues that they faced related to the code comments during the development. The overview uh, the, to confirm the, uh, the statements made by the interviewees in the first stage, 
we conduct an online survey with more pra uh, participants. Our participants come from both professionals from IT companies and open source practitioners collected from the GitHub. In total, we received uh, 720 valid responses. In the last stage, we, collect, uh, we collected the research papers about code comment generation techniques published in both from uh, software engineering and artificial intelligence fields and investigate the gap between, between the current, current state of the art and the practitioner's expectations that we meant from the survey. According to the responses, we found that more than 80% uh, participants claim that they often read code comments. However, almost the same amount of participants said that the, the quality of code comment is still not enough for them to read the source code. Their opinions on the on writing and the reading comments are contradictory. Everyone wants others to write as many comments as possible, but they don't want to write any comment. The most two critical commenting issues are lack of comments and the two general comments without useful information. According to the survey, 80% uh, uh, participants gave essential and worthwhile uh, ratings for comment generation tools. Among them, 18% uh, participants rate essential and would use it every day during the development. And the uh, 140 participants who think the to unwise and unimportant uh, may come from two main reasons. Uh, they are use useless and not trustworthy during the development. Considering the uh, participants' uh, expectations. 85% uh, participants prefer to generate uh, method level comments for them, and the functionality, how to use input and output, and the design uh, rationale are considered important for them. Then we also present the factors that affect practitioners' likelihood to adopt a uh, Code comment generation tool, including evaluation criteria, effectiveness, and efficiency. For evaluation criteria, the most important preferred evaluation criteria was the uh, amount of additional information and consciousness. Uh, and the least uh, support is the overlapped engrams between the uh, generated comments and the human written comments. In the last research question, we compare the current state of the art research and the practitioner's expectations. We find a huge gap between them. Uh, most of the papers generate uh, comments to, this, to describe functionality and implementation details, while a few papers describe how to use and why it exists in the source code. And uh, uh, most. You, uh, sorry to interrupt, I think you are. Uh... Uh, the time is up. You can just quickly summarize in okay. 15 seconds. Yeah. Now we can uh, find some interesting implications from the survey. Okay, that, thank you. For more details, please refer to our print or contact me from email. Thanks. Thank you, Zingu. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, we will move on to the next, uh, the third paper, which is titled on the evaluation of neural code summarization, engine team. Yeah. Okay, sure. Can you hear me on the, can you see my slide? Yes, I can hear you. I can see your stuff. Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, let's continue. Okay, let's start. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Anshan Shi from Xi'an Jiangdong University. This work is done during my internship at Microsoft Research Asia. And our work started some either overlooked but important detail and issues on the evaluation of neural customization. Uh, let's show some interesting findings. For evaluated metrics, we usually use the blue score to measure the generated summaries. As shown in figure one, the green rectangles uh, represent the different approaches, and the blue ovules represent the, the different blue variants. We can see that. Uh, there are many blue variants are used in previous work. And 
for the same generated summaries, we obtained the different results under the different blue variants. More worse, uh, some paper directly compare uh, with other approaches under different blue variants. They could be incorrect or unfair. Other aspects like code preprocessing method also affect the evaluated results. Uh, table three shows the performance of 16 code preprocessing method. Or oh, we can see that code preprocessing method have a large impact on the performance. It varies from negative uh, 18 percent to positive 23 uh, percent. Table four shows the performance of different model on different data sites. Uh, we can see that the performance of the same model is different on different data sites, and the ranking among the model does not preserve when evaluating them on different data sites. So in this work, we like to answer how to evaluate and compare code summarization methods more correctly and comprehensively. Uh, therefore, we select five uh, code summarization approaches, six uh, use the blue variants, 16 code pre-processing methods and uh, 12 uh, extended data sites. Uh, our study involved three aspects, uh, including evaluation metrics, code pre-processing methods, and uh, evaluated data sites. In each part, we review some overlooked misuse or other details, obtain some surprise findings, and uh, provide some actionable guideline. We can take the uh, uh, we, we take the first part as, uh, for an example. Uh, table four shows the performance of different metric score uh, evaluated in two data sites, named TLC and TLC D2. Uh, we can see that there, uh, there, there is a wide variance of blue variance, and the blue score on different blue variants are different for the same uh, summaries. And the ranking among the model is not uh, preserved when use a different uh, blue variance. For example, uh, the AST in GRU is higher than code uh, in terms of blue FC, but the lower than code uh, in other blue variants. Another finding is under blue FC measures, many existing models have lower than 20, uh, which means that uh, the, uh, the existing generated summaries are not just clear and understandable. Uh, therefore, it's a long way to solve this problem. After the thoroughly under, under, uh, after uh, thoroughly uh, analyze, uh, uh, analysis, after thoroughly analysis, uh, we found that the blue variants are different in three aspects, namely calculation level of small thing methods and uh, buggies in software in, uh, packages. And we also conduct the human evaluation to find which blue. Uh, uh, blue variance correlates with human perception the most, and the table four shows the results. We can find that blue DC is more relevant to human perce uh, perception. And to facilitate the future research, we build a shared to uh, shared cost summarization to box. It contains uh, 12, uh, 12 data sites for code preprocessing method and uh, a 16 zero combination, six blue variance implementation, and all experiment results described in this paper, and all in, in re implement code for the paper, which is not released the code. Uh, at least we conclude our work in this paper. We conduct an in depth analysis of recent neural summarization models, and we have invested several aspects of the model evaluation. And uh, to facilitate the future work, we also build a shared code summarization to box. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Ensheng. Thank you. It's a great talk. Thank you for sticking to time. Thank you. We have, uh, we have the next uh, talk titled Brain Model and our screen has for the ending. Uh, I think everyone. Uh, Sorry, DC Van. Uh, who is the present?
for this paper here. If the present is absent, we have to proceed, right? We have to move on to the next presentation. So let's ask. Sure, definitely, yeah. So I guess that uh, we'll move on to the next talk. Speed uh, of fine grain graph based code change representation for automated commit message generation. Oh, okay. It's over to you. Yeah. And do my slides display properly? Yes, yes, we can see your slides. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, let's start. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Jin Hao from Peking University. And it's my great honor to introduce our work on automated commit method generation. I will introduce our work from three parts introduction, approach, and the results. Part one is the introduction of our work. Commit messages summarize code changes in natural language. They can help developers quickly understand the high-level intention of code changes. However, manual writing commit messages can be very labor-intensive. Therefore, commit messages are often neglected by developers. As is reported, almost 14% commit messages in 23,000 Java projects are empty. To alleviate manual efforts in writing commit messages, researchers have proposed various techniques to generate commit messages automatically including template-based, information retrieval-based, and learning-based. Also achieving great performance, existing learning-based techniques have two limitations. First, edit operations are highly relevant to commit messages, but existing techniques represent code changes by simply putting old version and new version code together. As we can see in the example, between the old and new version, the majority of tokens remain unchanged and only one token is added. Such cost grained representation causes information redundancy, and models have to capture edit operations by themselves. Therefore, we propose to represent update operations explicitly so that models can precisely capture the differences between the old and new version code. Second, developers often name a method or class with phrases such as feature toggles and set tag listener in this example and the commit messages will contain the subtokens when code changes are relevant to the method or class. However, existing techniques mainly focus on integral tokens. Some techniques consider only integral tokens and ignore subtokens, while some techniques represent all subtokens in a compound representation. For example, use GRU to process the sentence of subtokens and get one single embedding vector to represent all subtokens. Such cost grained representation of tokens limits the utilization of subtokens and make it challenging to generate commit messages containing subtokens. Therefore, we propose to treat all integral tokens and subtokens equally important and represent subtokens individually. Next, I will introduce our proposed approach. We propose a fine grained graph based code change representation. It represents edit operations and code tokens in a finer way. First, we build the chopped AST. In the code changes, each line starts with a change type, minus, plus, or empty. A hunk refers to the continuous lines of with the same type. We propose to construct AST at hunk level. Second, we split integral tokens into separated subtokens and connect them with their belonging integral tokens. Third, we further introduce edit nodes, including we add, we delete, we move, and we update, and we match correspond to add, delete, move, update, and match edit operations. For example, in the figure, comparing the old line and new line, only one token is added, that is abstract. Therefore, we create a vAd node and connect abstract to vAd. Besides the AST structure, we also add the sequential information which can resolve the adjacent relationship and, and the order of the tokens. Finally, we merge them and obtain the final representation. In addition, we propose an encoder-decoder-based model to process the graph representation. We leverage a graph neural network as the encoder. The decoder is a transformer architecture with a dual copy mechanism. 
which can copy both integral tokens and sub tokens. Next, I will introduce the experiments we conduct. We have three research questions, overall performance, ablation analysis, and human evaluation. For RQ1, we can notice that our approach achieves the best performance in terms of our metrics. In RQ2, we build two variants, fewer edit manners and fewer self manners, as we can notice that the performance of each variant decreases, which indicates that each component of our technique is effective. To further study the quality of commit messages, from the perspective of a developer, we perform a human study. We can notice that Zero outperforms other techniques from the perspective of developers. Here comes the end of my presentation. Thank you for your listening. Thank you. Thank you for your talk and for the presentation. All right. So uh, we have we had four out of the five presentations. Check once more if uh, any of the authors or presenters for uh, the paper bridging between modern class or those code. If they are here, I just wanted to check that before we move on to the discussion phase. All right, it doesn't seem that the uh, authors or presenters are here. Okay, thank you all for uh, the wonderful talk. Uh, so now uh, we have some questions in the chat. Uh, Oleg has asked a question to Shin Fu. Uh, question again, uh, you, you are free to unmute and speak if you have a uh, question from Fong. Thanks for your question. And uh, for your question, I have some uh, ideas about that. Uh, now, actually, there is there are no such tools in according to our interview and survey. However, uh, many common to generation approaches are proposed in, in academia. In this work, we have described that uh, Common generation tools are important for uh, development. In other words, the common generation research is meaningful for the community. Uh, although the actual tool is not there, but, um, are not, is not there now, uh, participants can also estimate the potential of such tools from their uh, commenting practices and issues. Such information will motivate the uh, community to propose more useful tools for developers. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for answering me. Uh, uh, we also have a question for Raviji from uh, Hong Yu Chan. Um, so the question is, uh, what is the background of your interview or your talk about your study? So are they like experienced developers or junior developers that you play? Uh, yeah, uh, so thank you for the question. So uh, my, our intention was to like uh, get the feedback from developers who had a ex good experience in the system uh so that they can evaluate how the tool is performing and uh now as we have some like uh, interesting findings so now our next plan will be uh target junior developers whether like in some systems like whether the output help juniors or not yeah thank you okay thanks Avijit. uh uh, there's a question for you. Uh, the question is, have you considered using a sequential model to represent the code chains, such as the ASP path? And what is the insight of using? Okay, thank you for your question. 
Mm, there is uh, and there is some uh, there is um, one uh, there is a previous work um, using the uh, AST path to represent the uh, cochains um, as I know and uh, we also compare our work with their work um, the AST path uh, I think um, um, compared to um, the AST the AST path um, might uh, lose uh, some uh, structural information. Um, because the the past um, the past count preserves the uh, of um, parent to uh, parent to child um, relationship and uh, 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 and the as and the, um, the the nodes in one pass uh, the nodes in one pass um, may not uh, have the direct information uh, for example um, uh, the uh, the common use of the AST pass to represent code code is the uh, um, uh, AST AST to a uh, vector. Uh, the, the, this approach um uh, repre uh, use the uh, to use the uh, the shortest uh, pass uh, between two child nodes as the as one pass. The nodes in the in this pass. Um, um, don't have uh, may not have the um, uh, explicit relationship, and uh, we represent the uh, code change as a graph. And um, in the graph, um, all the nodes, uh, all the nodes, all the if structure information are preserved, um, and uh, because the graph neural network can uh, have a strong uh, capacity to process the. Uh, uh, graph structure. So we use the graph neural network to uh, as our encoder instead of the sequential uh, model. Uh, in your world, I think the use of graph to represent the code change uh, can preserve more struct information, and uh, the relationship between the nodes are more ex are more explicit compared to the ST path representation. Oh, that's, that's all. Okay. Thank you, Jinhao. Uh, Hong Yu has another question for Raviji. Uh, Hong Yu, if you want. Yeah, okay. You have answered it, but maybe you can mute it. I can answer now again. So, uh, actually, uh, uh, the abstract nodes uh, have like a bunch of execution paths, and the execution paths is collection of method names. So we, uh, to generate the summary, we collect the comments, method doc string comments of the methods, and then uh, use text and algorithm to generate the summary. Thank you. Right, right. Thank you, Abhijit. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions from uh, anyone in the audience? You can unmute and uh, ask the presenters. Yeah, Hong Yu has another question for Ensheng. Uh, so what will be your future work after you obtain this? Mm, OK, uh, so thanks for your question. Uh, we have so many fundings and uh, three, three aspects uh, for evaluating the metrics. Uh, although we found that uh, one of the blue variants is uh, more relevant to the human perception, but it's not enough. We should propose a new method which is more suitable for human perception uh, instead of existing approach. So one future uh, work is uh, we, we should propose some more suitable automatic uh, automatic metrics uh, for our pro uh, pro pre-processing method. We we although we have explored some existing uh, 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 approach, but there is uh, 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 other approach like BPE and other algorithm we should to explore and uh, find or propose a more effective code pre-processing method, and for uh, uh, since we have 
uh, explores this uh, models and find the this advantage and advantage of this model. And uh, I think it's time to propose a more effective uh, the model, which is more suitable for, for code models. Uh, for example, uh, we usually use uh, the NMT based uh, mod, uh, model to propose the code and the variable name uh, uh, if they are component words, we will split in the sub words and uh, treat uh, and uh, aggregate the semantic of each word to get the final representation. But I, I think the behavior of the source code uh, does not change if we change the variable name. So we should uh, uh, find a more powerful model that can uh, model the variable name name more effectively so it will be a good future work and uh, I'm, yeah i'm i'm sorry I, uh speak of this i have a question for you i'm not an expert in this field so maybe the question is very simple uh, you've talked about you split uh, words into sub words but how do you deal with the uh, multilingual problems like in many cases people use uh, languages other than English and then they use a, a mixture of English uh, and other languages because um, most of terminologies in text decks are like TensorFlow, but people may mention TensorFlow PyTorch in the context of other languages. Uh, it's, uh, mm, I'm it's not an expert. Problem. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not an expert in this field. So maybe the question is, uh, not uh, this meaningful. If if that's wrong, please correct me. Oh, I, I'm I'm not dis <laughs> I'm not disagree the existing approach. I I, ju I just think uh, uh, we we should explore uh, a orthogonal way to model the code. Uh, maybe th this two orthogonal way can uh, boost the performance together. Okay, maybe I ask a, a very technical detail for for your research. Uh, thank you for answering me. Like, but I do agree with you that um, there must be existing approaches to solve this. Uh, maybe I, I missed. To get uh, I mean, I think thank you very much for answering me because I, I asked uh, probably a very very technical detail. Okay, sure. Yeah. Thank, maybe, thank you very we, much. We can dis discuss it later. Yeah, sure. Sure. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, and uh, uh, Angel, I have a uh, suggestion about the metrics de design from my survey. Uh, some developers propose um, metrics from the Turing test. We think that um, the generated comments or a uh, document can pass the twin test means that the generated can uh, confuse the uh, machine that uh, it can't distinguish from the uh, generated comments from the human writer comments. So maybe you can design a uh, matrix um, that can, rep uh, can, can represent the twin test yeah, yeah, yeah. You are right. Uh, in MMT, there are many variants references for a generated translation, but uh, in, in the code simulation, there is only one sentence. One solution is we can give more candidates, and another solution is we should design some metrics to not to represent the diversity expression. I, I think it's, it's a good proposal. Yeah. Yeah, it is also pra uh, practical uh, metrics from the developers' suggestions from our interview and the survey. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, thank you. Uh, I have a question for uh, Xinhu. Um, uh, I, um, in my um, in our 
uh, research, I, and I'm, uh, we meet a, 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 a quick problem that to the, uh, the, the commit message um, is very uh, um, short uh, compared to the code change. And there are very, uh, there are many, um, uh, there are many uh, useless information in the uh, code change. Um, uh, so, so, so that, uh, so, uh, so that uh, it's, it's very difficult to, uh, it's very difficult to sum, uh, summarize the uh, information from the code change. Um, I think, uh, I think the, this, this phenomenon may also exist in the uh, code to comment, um, uh, code to comment um, area. Uh, so, uh, so, um, I, so I, I, I want to ask you um, uh, if you have some, uh, uh, if you have some uh, opinion on this problem. Uh, actually, uh, in this year, some papers have proposed the, the question about uh, the command message, um, such as a, a paper is nominated as a distinguished paper from uh, the distinguished paper, you can notice that they uh, conduct an empirical study on the commit message. Uh, they, uh, they, they introduce that the commit messages are, um, are, are trivial. Most of the commit messages are trivial in the uh, mining uh, data. And uh, I think uh, uh, the data set, the quality of the data set is more important in this community. And in other uh, technical uh, design, we can um, conduct some edit uh, actions. We can learn some edit, uh, edit actions from the code change, such as the delete actions, uh, adding actions, and the replace actions from the code changes. Uh, in my understanding, like what uh, Jinghao also mentioned, uh, in my understanding was that uh, uh, given this phenomenon in the commit message, did you encounter that uh, in your, I mean, called the uh, common of other generation? Let, let's say, did you see many um, commentary texts that are not meaningful to code? Yeah, uh, I noticed some uh, uh, project from the GitHub, they write some comments just to, uh, uh, just uh, mm, just uh, use the method name and split them into several words and uh, write them in the first line of the comments. Yeah. It is a uh, common uh, common phenomenon yes. in the development. very common practice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and because uh, this is the uh, the, pro the problem for myself. I'm also I really enjoy programming. Sometimes I wrote a lot of uh, comments there. It's basically about what I'm going to implement my code in the future. And after after finishing my code writing, and from the majority of the comments are no longer meaningful to the source code. But I will never to do to do the cleaning like comment the cleaning on my own. So this is, a, I think this is very interesting. And if you collect such data, that will be, that will be not useful for your, for your, your research, right? So I was wondering, maybe uh, you can, you can give us some suggestions, like how do you deal with such, uh, such phenomenon? Mm, um, from the, uh, from our survey, um, many uh, developers suggest uh, we can develop a, they develop a common completion tool instead of a common generation tool. They hope that the uh, the tool can help them to complete the comment, help them to uh, write a complete comment instead of just some words. And they think that the generation, yeah, the generation tool is not uh, trustable as uh, they have to check the uh, generated comments. Have a, they have to double check the comment. But if the tool can complete the comment instead of the gen instead of generating them, it would be much helpful for them. So it's a structured uh, comments 
generated by tools, right? Structural yeah. comments so that it's very easy to remove or to add, right? Yeah, uh, especially for the to do comments. And uh, uh, this, uh, such, such comments can be easily detected from uh, by automated uh, techniques. Okay, I think for people like me, uh, we really care about, uh, we're really curious about if you can remove the this uh, the outdated comments, but if that uh, is really, if that tools are available, I do think that would be very, very practical tools for us. Because mm -hmm. I, because I, we, we often write such comments every day and this actually, this is actually very harmful to the code readability, yeah, especially in larger software projects. Yeah, that's just my understanding. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a good proposal. Uh, mm, there are some work on just in time, mm, code summaries, code summaries, uh, just in time comment in consistent detection and update. But I, I think uh, uh, the in some useful comment can be deleted. So maybe we, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, handle this problem in the next project. I think it's, it's a Good. It's a good thing. Uh, it's a good real scenario. Yeah, especially if there are such uh, a meaningful code comments in open source projects, that will be more interesting. Uh, that's just my personal perspective. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but uh, uh, however, uh, uh, in industrial, <laughs> there are some strict uh, requirements. Uh, for writing and documentation. So uh, if we just handle, if we propose some uh, technique for the open source, but it's uh, not the true scenario in industrial, I, I think we, we should consider more, <laughs> consider more uh, uh, constraint to, uh, uh, to go on this project. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. People, we all, we, yeah, we should agree that we should aim at a bigger scope rather than just open source projects. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. But as a, a myself, just a um, developer, so I write code every day. So I simply think of the open source project, projects. But I agree with you that, uh, of course, we should aim bigger scope in this case. Yeah, yeah. Thank, yeah. Thank you for thank you for answering my question. Yeah, that's your work. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is a it's a changing it's a changing work to um, detail the um, most uh, useful information from the code code um, uh, compared to the uh, uh, traditional NLP tasks because there are too many um, uh, trivial information. All right. Yeah. So it's a very interesting discussion about code generation, code comment generation. So yeah, I, I wanted to uh, ask Avijit also about this. Like, uh, so uh, uh, generated this uh, 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 like this tree-like structure based on the code comments, right? And these issues of you know, developer writing relevant comments, and uh, you know, so how how will the tool handle such uh, you know such uh, yeah maybe you can talk about that. yeah uh, so uh, many cases like uh, when when the like team practice is not like well structured like then like the comments are not like properly maintained so uh but when we uh selected our subject system uh we uh had some requirements and uh like whether they follow code commenting uh like practice uh they had that but uh as we need that so like in our future work we plan to use some automatic code comment generation technique for methods uh, because uh, in open source and many projects, like comments are not there, so we plan to use that uh, for our system. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah thanks Davji. thank you uh, others uh, does anyone else have any questions we have around five more minutes for this session uh, if uh, there's no question i have the last one because i'm i'm sorry i take so much time today uh, as I have, uh, I'm not from this research field, so I'm actually very excited to see so many uh, NLP or machine learning for SE. I'm, myself is just software developer, so I'm really curious about curious about uh, uh, when you are going to build up such tools for for us. Like, when can I see the artifacts available from software development tools like VS Code add-ons and uh, uh, Patrum, let's say? because uh, everything from this session is new to me. And I'm really curious about when I can use it. What's the question for me? I'm sorry, um, my question was, do you plan to uh, make your tool available to us, to software developers? Uh, yeah, uh, currently uh, in the paper, we have a link, like uh, we have a hosted application uh, where we have like, one subject system, but uh, I think in future we have some plan, like uh, if we get some request, we can add some open source project on that. And our code is also open source. So if someone wants to uh, generate the tree themselves, they can also do that. But yeah, in future we have some plan to like uh, have some plugin for VS Code or something like that. Uh, thank you very much. I'm also, yeah. I'm also really interested in knowing that one can the two generate the code comments for me and the community <laughs> message as well. Like, uh, yeah, that will be very interesting when you make some code change, automatically it generates a pop-up window that tells you should use it, such a committed message. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you can use a, use a compiler to generate a summary for the given code snippet. Uh, yes, yes. But, but uh, uh, some, to support the community message is very manila. They they cannot generate uh, some more general <laughs> general intent. For example, update readme then read, update readme or update a uh, few delete a few or add a few. Uh, so uh, they are uh, li limited that's... limited to to support the community message. But but there yeah. has some tool to support. Uh, summarization generation. Thank, uh, thank you very much. Uh, but I'm actually, I'm not expert from this field. I would like to stress that. But I'm actually very positive, positive about this because back in five years ago, we all believed that the Google Translator is, is not really practical. But today, that many people are relying on that. So maybe in a few years, now we will see that. Yeah, that's just my yeah. perspective. Yes, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, Thank you. Uh, wanted to add something? Uh, no, 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 no. All right. Uh, I just want to check once more if uh, the presenters for Pico 4, if they are there, uh, we can uh, do it right now. Uh, bridging pre trained model for source code understanding. Are any of the authors, presenters here? Okay, so uh, have any other questions? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, maybe in the maybe up we'll have co pilot asking the presenters questions also. Right. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the, because machine learning is uh, is uh, trying to revolutionize uh, many aspects in computer science. Like I know even in the compiler design it utilizes uh, some machine learning techniques now. Yeah, or maybe yeah. you'll have a bot it's which will a bot will done. answer your question. Yeah, yeah. Compiler is built on Codex, and uh, Codex is uh, uh, continue pre the uh, GPT three on uh, large oh. uh, Python data sites. 
Yeah, and and I think they were also using that for uh, documentation as well now, software documentation and requirement engineering. Like I I heard about I heard a talk about the NLP for requirement engineering. They collected a review comments from the App Store. So I'm actually very positive, but I'm just, but I'm not expert in this field. Right. All right, we are nearing the end of this uh, session. So thank you all the authors, the presenters for the wonderful presentations and the discussion. Thank you for all those who attended. And uh, JV Wang was a student volunteer. Thank you for uh, helping me out. To, and I hope everything went smoothly. All right. Uh, nice day, evening, night, wherever you all are. And uh, yeah, the next session will start soon. All right, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Much. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye.